Hello fellow book lovers, welcome back to Bookish Ramblings. In this video I'm giving you the worst slash most disappointing books that I read in the year 2020. So grab your caffeinated beverage of choice and let's talk about some books. One more thing before we get started, before I forget, I would like to acknowledge that I have finally reached and surpassed 500 subscribers and that is just very exciting news. I finally hit 500 and I just wanted to like take a minute to acknowledge it and say thank you to all of you who have subscribed. 500 to me is a lot that that many people would care to subscribe to my channel or as many people that do um, watch my videos and comment and actually care about what I have to say and appreciate the content that I put out like that just it means a lot to me and I love doing this it's really fun and I just wanted to say thank you to all you guys thank you to my faithful watchers and video likers and video commenters <laughs> I just really appreciate it and um, I love talking to you guys and just thank you to everyone who got me to 500 subscribers thank you very much now we can get on with the video for the record, let me just say that honestly last year was a really good reading year for me. I read a lot of books and I really enjoyed most of them that I read. There were very few that I didn't like. So the books that I'm going to be talking about today, most of them really aren't terrible books. They were just my least favorites because I read so many good ones. So the first book that I'm going to talk about, it is very sad, but it is Nova by Chuck Black, book one and the Star Lore Legacy. This was not a terrible book, but the reason it is on this list is because I love Chuck Black and I set the expectations so high for this book. Like I really thought it was going to be my new favorite sci-fi, thought it was going to be like five out of five stars, just super good, amazing, and I was going to love it. And I just didn't love it. I liked it, but it just wasn't like, wow, this is amazing. So it was very much a disappointment. I really got to stop setting such high expectations for books like this in my mind because I always end up disappointed. I do it to myself. That said, like I would still recommend this book to anyone that likes sci-fi and is interested in a like Moses biblical allegory, I give it four out of five stars. But it was just, it was definitely a letdown for me personally and that's why it's on this list, sadly. Next is White Wolf and the Ash Princess by Tammy Lash. Don't ask me why, but for some reason I just assumed that it was going to be like a fantasy about like an actual princess and all this stuff and like fantasy type thing and I had seen some friends on Goodreads had read it and they really liked it and so I was very very excited about it and I thought I was really gonna love it but when I got it I was a little confused because then I realized it wasn't a fantasy and I'm not even sure what time period it was set in like it never said and I'm not really good with that sort of thing so I'm still unsure about the time period exactly but it was like a historical type thing but it was not a fantasy and there were just a lot of things I didn't like about it I didn't like that I didn't know what time period it was that was really annoying and I wish that it had been like put on there somewhere also I didn't like the characters very much the main character girl I thought what acted like way too immature and she was annoying I thought a lot of scenes just weren't written or explained very well and I found myself confused. I thought other characters reacted to things in a way that didn't make any sense. I don't want to be like critical because I think this was the girl's first novel maybe. Um, so I'm not trying to like be mean or put her down or be like overly critical but it felt like someone's first novel. Some of the writing was just like, it just wasn't written very well. And I think that's mostly all I had to say about it. I believe I gave it two out of five stars and I had bought it from thrift books and then unhauled it very soon after because I just didn't care for it. So that was another one that was a disappointment. My next disappointing read, this one's also very sad that it's on this list, No Chance Meeting by Jay Elliott. This is the same author of the Ilion Chronicles. She's just going by a different pen name because this is her first contemporary ever. First of all, the, uh, the cover is adorable and I love it because Jail Knight aka J, J. Elliot is one of my favorite authors ever and I love the Ilion Chronicles with all of my heart and soul. I was fully convinced that this was going to be my favorite contemporary ever and I was going to love it and it was going to be just super amazing. Maybe I set myself up to dislike it because of how much hope and the high expectations that I had set for it, maybe I just like set them way unrealistically high in my mind or something. And maybe, maybe it's not the book's fault that I didn't like it. Maybe it was just me expecting too much out of it and being maybe overly critical of it 
because of that but I just didn't get into this um the romance between the two characters I just wasn't feeling and wasn't into and it just wasn't really working for me and then the story itself I just felt was kind of just slow I guess and a little bit boring and I felt like not enough interesting things were happening and it was just kind of like kind of mundane everyday life sort of things and I was just like when is something gonna happen and the couple I just wasn't all excited about and I didn't really care for so again maybe it's just me but I just didn't care for it. I gave it 3 out of 5 stars. And I was really upset that I didn't like it. It was supposed to be so good. What happened? I am hoping that it was just me. And that somewhere down the line I will reread this. And maybe now knowing what to expect. Maybe I'll enjoy it more if that makes sense. And I'll actually appreciate it more than I did the first time. That's my hope anyway. So yeah. cover is just so cute. It was supposed to be so good. Next is Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. This one I didn't set any expectations for. I wasn't really sure what to expect out of it. I just didn't like it. It seems like everyone else and all the other booktube people that I watch on here that have read this have loved it and just gotten so much out of it and so much enjoyment and I just didn't. So maybe there's something wrong with me but honestly it's just like this style of writing I think just isn't for me. There were parts here and there throughout the story that I thought were funny and that were entertaining but as a whole I just didn't like it. Peter Pan is like a savage little kid and you know it's just I grew up watching the Peter Pan Disney cartoons so that's the image that I have in my mind and this is just there's a lot more to the original story and the characters are even more savage and like evil than they are in the cartoon and there's just all kinds of things in here they didn't happen in the cartoon and I was just like, this is terrible, what is this? So yeah, Peter Pan was completely awful and unlikable, though funny at times, I admit. And I didn't like the way the story ended. Something really terrible happened that I'm still mad about and then I just, I didn't like the ending. It wasn't the ending I would have hoped for. It's a little weird sometimes and I just, just not for me. I can't, I don't like things like this. It's just not for me. That's all I can say. I believe I gave this two out of five stars. Next is Chosen by Ted Decker. This is like a spin-off kid series from his Adult Circle series, which I've never read. This one I just didn't like. It is a fantasy. It wasn't all that interesting to me personally, and mainly it was just the characters. I just didn't care for any of the characters at all. And the main character, that's like the most important one, and I just didn't care for him at all. To me, there was just nothing likable about any of them. They weren't endearing in any way. They just weren't good characters in my opinion and the main character whose name that I don't remember kept saying this phrase and thing over and over and over again and I hate when characters do that it's so repetitive and so annoying and the thing he kept saying was I'm a lover and a poet not a fighter okay I can't even tell you how many times that he said it and it was just really grating on my nerves. I'm like, can you not say that again, please? So yeah, again, I think I gave that one like two out of five. The next disappointing read is Clara Soldier by Brittany Fitchter. This is another one that I just expected a lot out of and thought I was going to love. So it was a real disappointment when it didn't wow me. This is a Nutcracker retelling. I read this during Christmas and I still even now cannot put my finger on what about it I disliked and why I only gave it three out of five stars. I really don't know. I don't know why. There's not any particular thing I can think of with the characters or the plot or anything that was messed up or I didn't like. It was just kind of meh. It wasn't that great. And I really wanted to love it. Like so bad I really wanted to love it. And I really thought that I was going to for some reason. I think because the cover is so pretty. It's the Nutcracker and I was just like oh it's going to be my new favorite Christmas book. It's going to be so good. And it just wasn't. So that's all I can say about this one. Next is A Light in the Storm by Karen Hess. This is a Dear America book as you can see. I was reading it. I was enjoying it just fine. But then I got to the end and I was like, well that was just kind of a bummer. These characters are having problems throughout the whole book and 
in the epilogue, it just got worse from there. Her parents were having problems. They end up like getting divorced at the end. And then these other characters who like each other separate and never see each other again. And then it just, you know, it was like all the sad things. And, and I was just like, well, that's just terrible because I like happy endings. And this wasn't a happy ending. This one was just kind of depressing. And that's why I didn't like it. Things didn't play out the way I wanted them to. So I gave it, I believe, two out of five stars. Next is, again, sadly, The Peasant's Dream by Melanie Dickerson. This was her grand finale to her much beloved Hoggenheim series. And it was a letdown. I really shouldn't have placed my expectations so high on this book considering that her previous few were disappointments but I did because it was the grand finale and it was a reverse Cinderella retelling which I thought sounded fun. I was just like it's it's the end of the series like surely she has put a lot more effort into this one and it's going to be really cute and really good but this one was just as much of a letdown as her last few had been and again I'm not trying to be like really mean because I love Melanie Dickerson. I always will, I think. But just to be honest with my feelings, like I hope she never sees this and I'm sure she won't. I just, I gotta say how I feel. So here it goes, but I'm not trying to be hateful or really like mean or hurtful to anybody or her or anything. There were many things about this that I had a problem with. <sighs> First of all, I have felt for a while now that her writing just lacks any kind of depth or emotion like at all. It's like it literally feels like she's just throwing these stories together with very little thought or effort and it just feels like she's not trying. That's what it feels like. The two characters, I was just like, why are you even falling in love? You're both so boring. You haven't even had any good conversations. What about each other is there to fall in love with? Like, I just, I don't understand how you got to this point. There were things about the book and the plot that I liked. I was like, oh, I like that idea. I like that, you know, that happened. But the way it was written, I was like, this could have been written so much better though. Or that scene could have been written in a more realistic, believable way. Or that conversation was really awkward. The dialogue was awkward and just lame and could have been written better. Again, with the characters repeating a phrase over and over and over again. What's this girl's name? Adela? Yeah, she kept repeating this phrase about her and her love. But we're both artists. And that was her argument for everything when people were like, you two don't belong together. Like you're a Duke's daughter and he's just like this wood carver. And she's like, but we're both artists. We belong together, we're the same. And I'm like, girl, can you stop saying that? It was very annoying. So yeah, I only gave it three out of five stars because again, there were things that I did like, but a lot that I didn't, but it's also Melanie Dickerson. So I gave it three out of five. This last book that I'm gonna mention, I wasn't even sure if I should talk about it because it is a DNF. So I was like, does it belong in this video? But I just feel like it's worth talking about. But I have been honest that I didn't finish it. So you can keep that in mind if you want. You might say, since you didn't finish this book, you really have no right to be so hard on it because you don't know how it ended. But before I decided to DNF it, I was hating it so much. I was like, but what if the ending makes it all worth it? But I had a feeling that it wasn't going to. So I went on Goodreads and I read a bunch of reviews, even reviews with spoilers, because I was trying to decide if it was worth the finishing of it. And from everything that I read and could gather and tell, it wasn't going to get any better. So that's why I decided to DNF it. And that's why I feel justified in saying all these things I'm about to say. The book, I don't think I even said it yet, is Wuthering Heights by... Emily Bronte. This book is a classic. I've heard about it my whole life. It's a title that you just hear. So I downloaded the audiobook and was listening to it because I didn't have a physical copy to read. Oh my gosh. Where to begin? Like I honestly don't even know. Like there's so much. It's like how do you even talk about it? This book was so awful. Words cannot express. The thing that was so awful was the characters themselves. There's a lot of characters, but I guess the main two characters are like Kathy and then what's his face? Like, I don't even know how to describe them. They're just terrible people. And that's actually putting it nicely. I looked up some uh, synonyms for terrible. They are both of them. Nasty, 
disgusting, very unpleasant, dreadful, horrid, abominable, vile, revolting, loathsome, repulsive, odious, sickening, nauseating, repugnant, horrendous, offensive, appalling, diabolical, lousy, contemptible, wretched, despicable, spiteful, malicious, definitely, mean-spirited, hateful, cruel, low-down people you've ever read about. They, they don't care about anyone but themselves, so they have no problem using other people, manipulating other people to their own advantage, just always like cursing each other and like, I hate you and you die, I wish you were dead, I'd love to kill you. Throughout the whole book, it was so like ridiculous. Like if the characters by the end of the book would become better people or it had a happy ending somehow and they changed for the better, like, that's one thing, but from everything I could tell, that was not going to happen. It was only going to get worse from there. And I felt like one or both of the characters were probably going to die. They were probably going to be, like, some cheating on spouses involved before it was over. I felt like I could be wrong because I, I didn't finish it, so I don't know. But I felt like that was entirely possible. There was also already kind of a weird situation slash affair going on. Like, nothing had happened, but it just wasn't, like it wasn't right. Kathy is like the worst person ever. Like listening to her whine and complain and rant and hate on people just was like ch nails on a chalkboard. Like you just, you want to die. Like literally, you want to kill yourself. It was pure torture. So honestly, I don't understand what people love about this book. I don't understand why it's received so much praise. Why do you want to read a story about like doomed love and evil characters that are just completely immoral and that hate everyone around them, including each other? Like I don't, what's the point? If you've read this book and you actually did like it, feel free to comment down below and tell me what about it you liked or what about it made it worth reading in your opinion? What What is the value in a book like this? Those are all the books, the worst slash most disappointing books of 2020. Let me know what your least favorite of 2020 was and I will see you in my next video. Bye!